This video shows you how to get started with the DevExpress data editors for Xamarin Forms. You'll build a simple login form with a combo box, a masked input, and a password editor. After the basic setup, you'll add a few input validation rules. We published the code for this login form sample to a GitHub repository. See the URL in the video's description. Feel free to download the entire project and follow along while we explain different parts of the code. The app is based on the standard Xamarin Forms blank application template. If necessary, refer to our documentation for information on how to add all required DevExpress references to your Xamarin Forms projects. In this video, we start with an empty content page. First, we add code for layout management and the view model reference. The view model is in a separate code file that we will reference frequently throughout this tutorial. Let's add a DevExpress combo box to the layout. Note the following about this code. It sets the label for the editor. The drop-down list obtains data from the view model's country codes list. You'll see that each entry in the list contains a few data fields. At this point, we'll only display the code value. Switch to the view model code to see how it supplies data to the editor. The country codes property obtains its list from a separate country phone info class that we'll see in a bit. The selected country code holds the editor's value. Scroll down to review the country phone info class. You'll see properties that store country name, code, phone number mask, and digit count. The default codes collection is populated with a few countries and their respective phone format information. Let's run the application to make sure that the combo box works as expected. You see the editor, its label, and the drop-down list with country codes. In the next step, we'll add more information to the drop-down. Next to each country code, we'll display the corresponding country name to facilitate user input. Let's take a look at the changes to our XAML code. The combo box now defines an item template. That template references a static resource, which we'll inspect next. As you can see, the code puts two labels side by side and binds them to code and country fields of the underlying object. These are the same properties you saw before in the country phone info class defined in the view model. Let's run the app and review the changes. If you open the drop-down list, you'll now see that country names are displayed next to each code. Return to XAML code, and now let's add a phone number editor. We'll use a text editor that sets its properties as follows. Mask is specified based on the country code you selected in the combo box. A special keyboard type for phone numbers will appear when this editor is active. Run the application to see the result. Go to the phone input to see the default phone number mask for United States. Then switch the code to a different country and see how that changes the input format in the phone editor. And the keyboard style is numeric, as we specified in XAML. Back in XAML, let's add a third editor. This time, it's a password edit. All its settings are straightforward. The only one to note is the max character count that will limit the input string length. Let's run the app to see how this property affects the UI. If you start typing within the password editor, you see that it hides the actual character as any other password input. It also displays a button that lets you switch to regular input view if necessary. And note that because we specified maximum character limit, the control displays a label in the bottom right corner. The label shows how many characters you entered and the maximum allowed number. Of course, you wouldn't usually need that functionality for a password editor. Our sample simply shows this feature so you can use it in other scenarios. Now let's add code that validates user input and displays error messages if necessary. We make similar changes to the text editor and password editor code. Is focused attribute is bound to a property in the view model. That property change will trigger a function that validates the input. Error text attribute obtains its value from another property in the view model. That validates procedure, and will set that error text as necessary. Has error attribute indicates whether the editor displays the text specified above. In essence, it looks up the error text and returns true if the text is not null or an empty string. First, let's see the code that converts the error string to a Boolean value that indicates whether an error exists. The converter class is defined in the XAML code behind file. It simply runs a series of checks on the input string to determine whether any error message has been specified. In the view model, you'll find properties bound to is focused attributes in XAML. These properties trigger validation procedures when corresponding editors lose input focus. 
you can scroll down to see how that code works. The phone number editor checks that the value is not empty and contains all characters as required by the country code. The password editor requires the input string length to be at least eight characters. Once again, this is not a type of hint you'd use with a password editor, but we added that code for demonstration purposes only. Run the application. Try to violate different validation rules we specified in code. For example, focus the phone number editor and then tap somewhere else to see the error message that prohibits empty values. In the last step, we'll add a login button to the form. The button is bound to a command defined in the view model. So let's take a look there. The code initializes this command with two procedures. One executes the action, and another checks the action availability. The login method is blank. You can write custom code there to execute any commands when users tap the button. The can login method checks that input fields are not empty and whether or not any validation errors have occurred. Let's run the application and see how it works. The login button is initially disabled and stays that way until values are entered and pass all validation rules. This concludes our quick overview of DevExpress Xamarin Forms Editor Controls. Remember that you can download the code for this sample from GitHub. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can get notified anytime we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.